Hi, I'm Scott Manley, and today I'm going to talk to you about Kerbal Space Program, which is one of these wonderful little sandbox indie games that lets you build rockets and try to get them into space. And I'm going to show you how to build something that will go into orbit and, more importantly, return its passengers safely to Earth. So you see we've already put a parachute on top and a decoupler underneath the capsule so we can detach the capsule and uh, bring it down safely. Now we're going to give it some liquid fuel tanks to support one main engine. Four of them should give us enough fuel to get into orbit and around it we're going to add using the symmetry tool six decouplers for um, solid rocket boosters you see it automatically duplicates them and we put our solid rocket boosters onto those and that's us set to go we can save this you know under whatever we name we, we like we don't need to touch the staging configuration it'll work as it is and then we go to the launch pad this is the 0.11 experimental release by the way so there's some new features that you're seeing here underneath the altitude gauge there is a, an atmosphere gauge and that's kind of uh, illustrates early on that we're primarily concerned with getting vertical as quickly as possible to get above the atmosphere which will slow us down Having six rocket boosters on it uh, does cause it to kind of wobble and torque a little, um, but you can manually control it. It's not anything particularly hard. You don't need excess control. Um, stage separation is very fast. You just want to get the thing up to maximum thrust, but um, don't let it go too high hot. If it gets you know above 50% overheat, you probably want to uh, throttle back a little. The main thing is you're aiming to just go up vertically as fast as possible uh, and then once you get high enough, about 20 kilometers, you're going to pitch over and start to go sideways. The reason you wait is that if you try to go sideways too soon, the air resistance is going to slow you down. You're just going to waste fuel. Um, so be patient. Don't go too soon. And don't go too late. If you go too late, what's going to happen is you'll end up with your um, maximum altitude being much higher than you want. So there's definitely a balance. And uh, the other problem is if you go up vertically too long, you might run out of fuel before you attain orbital velocity. But with this rocket, that's pretty hard since it can practically get to escape velocity. So yeah, as I said, this is the 0.11x version. It's an experimental release, but probably by the time you see this video, it'll be the full release. And it's got some new features that weren't in the previous version. Uh, it has a map feature, which gives you an idea of what the orbit's like. And we're going to use this to get into orbit. And you can see they're showing the capsule and the apoapsis, which will be the highest altitude. Right now, it just says 17 kilometers. That means if we turned off our engines at this time, we would cruise to about 17 kilometers and then fall back to Earth. Now we want to get that up to about 100 kilometers. Another change since the last time I did this video was that the atmosphere has been extended up from 35 kilometers all the way to 70 kilometers thereabouts. Um, you can certainly, it's not as hard of a transition as it once was, you can actually um, orbit inside the atmosphere for a certain amount of time, although you, your orbit will decay. So uh, 100 kilometers is a good altitude to aim for, uh, it gives you plenty of room above the atmosphere and you'll have, you won't need that much delta v to return so now you can see i've i've uh, pitched this thing over to about 45 degrees at 30 kilometers we're just i'm just kind of keeping it in the middle of the velocity reticule as we uh move down slowly it'll naturally get pulled down as gravity goes and um I think I'm probably going fast enough that I can really bring it on towards the horizon. You see I'm turning the SAS units on and off, but um, it's not really making that much difference. You can see my apogee is now uh, about 50 kilometers. Um, as we start to go sideways faster, it'll actually rise because uh, it's, not just a, it's not just the vertical component that matters, but the lateral component. Um, you know, we don't need to, uh, we're at about 1,200 kilometers now, 1,200 meters per second, about 50 kilometers. Uh, we're going to have to reach about 2,200 kilometers, uh, 2,200 meters per second or 2.2 kilometers per second uh, before we're anywhere near orbital velocity. You can see the atmosphere gauge is getting pretty low. Uh, we're about 55 kilometers. We're almost getting outside the atmosphere now. We're we're essentially not being constrained by the the um, air resistance. 
Now you can see our Apple Apsis, or Apple Key, is now 75 kilometers. At this point, we're just wanting to go sideways. We can kind of throttle the rocket back for some fine control. One of the things about the map is you can't actually adjust the controls uh, at this time when you're in the map mode. So, uh, and you can't you can't adjust the thrust or anything. It'll continue to fire, but you can't keep it pointed. So there you go. This thing's going to cruise up to about 108 kilometers, and at that then it'll start to fall back. And judging by the orbit, you'll see it's going to fall back to the planet. I have turned off the rockets. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until I get up to this altitude and then fire the rockets again to bring me into a more circular orbit. Now, another feature that got introduced in uh, the point one one release is time acceleration. Now we can use the um, the left the the dot and the comma keys to increase the time warp, and that'll make things happen much more quickly. You see that the altitude doesn't change uh, because we're out of the atmosphere. This is times four acceleration. We, that's times ten. We're going to get all the way up there, and then we'll return the speed uh, the time back to normal because uh, in accelerated time mode they don't let you uh, adjust the rocket thrust or anything either uh, at least for, as far as I can tell so when we're at the apogee that is the perfect time to uh, raise your parakeet parakeet is currently inside the planet so uh, the most efficient way to, to get it outside the planet is to thrust along our orbit vector which is the empty reticule at this point so we'll just line it up. Um, with four fuel tanks, this thing is really slow turning, very stable. Um, you know, you're going to have to manually fly it, but it's not hard. It's hard to lose control of it. So I just fire up the, the rocket slowly, and we can actually watch in the map screen. We just try to make it switch back and forth and try to keep it exactly aligned. But we're using minimal amount of thrust and you can see that our speed is rising slowly. And if you watch, you can actually see that the orbit is getting uh, more and more circular. The It's not hitting the ground as far around. Or We're up to about 2140 meters per second. And now you see the periapsis is there. Now we want to get the periapsis or perikey high enough that it does not end, end up inside the atmosphere. So get it above 70, and that's us in orbit. We can shut our engines down and leave the system running. So just leave it there. It's stable enough again. I got it lined up nicely. Um, we'll just keep checking. I guess I wandered a little off there, but not far. There we go, 76 kilometers, uh, 109 kilometers, and we can just, you know, that, that thing will be stable. And let's be clear and stable. I mean, the altitude will rise and fall. Um, it won't stay at a constant altitude, but at no point will it fall back to the planet unless it receives some push from the rocket thrusters. That thing you can time accelerate and it'll continue to run as long as you don't actually fire the thrusters. And from there, you've basically got um, about three quarters of a tank of fuel left. So you've got a lot of options what to do now that you're in orbit. You, know, you can try and try to circularize your orbit to minimize the eccentricity, which is a whole lot easier now you have that tool. You can try and boost yourself into a higher altitude orbit. You can bring yourself back down. You can try and see how close you can orbit. You can drop the altitude of your parakeet down inside the atmosphere and watch it aero break if you're that bored. Or you can just bring it back to the planet simply by making a retro burn at any point and that'll drop your parakeet down deep inside the atmosphere and once you're falling back down to the atmosphere you can hit the stage separator and when you'll your capsule will drop off and eventually fall back to the planet and then of course fire your parachute before you hit the ground land gently break out the champagne and then uh, head off with jeb to the nearest bar for a drinking competition no doubt I'm Scott Manley. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll uh, see you in space.